Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong, the winners, we are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Hello, Humana Storians, and welcome to another exciting episode of Humana Story Lives Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 52. And I am joined by Wonder Woman. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. All right, so this lighthearted show where we actually force our hosts to read your comments from previous Humana Story activities and then discuss them while you're tied to a chair and beat into submission with a wet fish. If they're good, I'll read them on the air, and if they're bad, Wonder Woman will read them and exploit them on the air. If you want to learn more about it, Come on over to Humana Story. Coffee with Humana Story again is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story community members from around the world. We also have the Green Lantern and Power Girl or Powder Girl because you write like crap. <laughs> power. And if you can't find the show, then you're probably using a Power Ranger in the middle of the Sahara somewhere off grid. I was in a hurry, okay? All right, so today we are not answering any of your damn questions. But we'll read your <laughs> comments because I, really, I just I don't feel like reading all this crap. So, oh well. If you still love snail mail, it's P.O. Box 712-151, Santee, California, 92072-2151. We have a Life in Review episode actually coming up. I don't remember what date. I just remember I know it's coming up. I think I believe it's this Saturday on the 28th. Yes, that is correct. You'll be talking to Emily Pittsford, and we'll be talking about the loss of a child. It'll be at 8 p.m. And we're just going to dive right on in. It's Fantastic Friday, number 14, Flat Friday, number 14, because I have no other things to talk about. And it's always Flat Earth. It's always Mark Sargent. It's always... No, I'm just kidding. All but, about Mark Sargent. But we also have the Power nice. Girl. Power Girl, that would be Melody Sed... Sed... Oh, God. Sadawi. Yes, Sadawi. 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 Get it right, man. S-A-D-O-W-I. It's not that many letters. You know what? You almost... No, you know what? I'm not going to do it. All right, so we have a question of the day. Would you do whatever it takes to survive and like live a longer life? Now, and this means anything. Would you do anything to survive and live a longer life? And we'll be answering that question in the second segment. So let's just get right on into it and uh, see how Mark Sargent is doing. Go ahead, Mark. How are you? I am doing well. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, thank you again for having me on such a wonderful show. I am well. I am well. I am grand. <laughs> I am grand. Okay, so let's uh, just talk to us. We'll dive right on in it. How's that? We're going to talk about your uh, show. You're, it's coming up here soon. Um, yeah. One of these days. One yeah. of these days. Real soon. Real soon. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting show. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm just, tell I'm us just all about it. it. Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about saying, saying something weird. 
Yeah. Or... I'm probably going to see a lot of weird things. That's all right. You're okay. Rejected. We like weird. How my mind works. I am doing a brand new website called MarkSargent.com and a bunch of new shows and a bunch of new content. It's going to be a subscription based service. Uh, I'm not going to put that much new material out on YouTube. I'm still going to be doing my Strange World show on True Frequency Radio. And we're going to be interviewing you know, new people on the new show, and it's going to be really great. So the, the trailers are already being built, and the shows, I mean, the, the website's pretty much up. You can go to MarkSargent.com right now, and most of the framework's already been built out. And it's being done by iMobilize. They are my new producers at the moment. These are the guys that did my apps for the iPhone and Android. You ask and... them, where's my app? My cool app. No, I'm just kidding. I... <laughs> I, I didn't ask them to do the app. They they, uh, they contacted me and said, yeah, we'd like to turn your clues into an app. And then they also did a secondary app for my survival guide called um, The End of the World uh, with Mark Sargent, I believe. And so, yeah, it's, so it's been great so far. We're we're getting really excited for it and can't wait. I, I, I always hear you mention something about your, uh, your survival guide, but yeah. I, I've never <laughs> actually known what it is. Obviously, it's a survival guide, and I know you were going to go there with it, so I beat you to the punch. But <laughs> what made you write that? Uh, Katrina made me write it more than anything. I was a little disturbed during the California Northridge earthquake in the 90s, but when the whole Katrina thing happened, I really uh, realized that, that most people were not ready for any sort of disaster at all. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a zombie apocalypse or an end of the world or four horsemen type thing. I just, I, I, what I, what I understood was that a ba what we're looking at is like a long-term power outage where your power goes out and it stays out for a while. What would most people do? And down here in the States, not up there in crazy Canada, uh, most Americans would would panic, and a lot of bad things would happen because they don't they don't prepare for any of that. I mean, we have insurance for everything. Not to go off on a rant, we have insurance for everything, but hardly anybody puts a, aside a case of water and food and some batteries, and maybe something to defend it with. And yeah, that's, very that's, rarely. Very rarely. So, and with Katrina, we saw some really really bad stuff happen. So that's why I made it. Uh, and I, I started up a blog called UrbanSurvivalUSA.com back in the late 2009, I believe. And so I made a guide called Empty Shelves. It was based on the website, and I would give it away free to anybody that wanted it. And made uh, made a couple of mentions to it in uh, the Strange World shows and, and even put a, th a, a YouTube video together and said, look, I'm giving away the guide. And lots of people have emailed me for it. It's free. It's just a little PDF file, and I've sent it out. I printed out copies uh, and given it to family and friends, and I keep one with me in the car. And it's just a little guide that tells you, and it should be free. If it helps you, you know, survive any sort of uh, really stressful kind of pseudo disaster type scenario, then it's then it's worth it. If it changes just one life, then it's all been worth it for me. So we actually have some comments. I was going to read a comment from. Uh... Our last Coffee with Humana story that we had from Zachary Zabala. And it was about the whole Captain Hook ship and if it was real. Because they say that they found it at the bottom of the ocean. So he says he did a little research on the story behind Captain Hook. And it seems he was based off a real person. But the author made a point not to go into detail about who he really was. He said, Hook was not his real name. To reveal who he really was, even at this date, would set the county in a blaze. This tells me the person he based it on was of an older era, but a real person nonetheless. I absolutely believe that they could have found this person's ship. Whether or not this person ever went into a place where people never age is beyond me. I have come to realize that there is so much that I don't know and understand. And I cannot claim such a place does not exist. Great show. Cannot wait until next week. Take care and God bless. That was like three weeks ago. I know I've been... <laughs> I've been... I've been uh, tired. And uh, lazy. <laughs> 
So, Melody, what cool things do you have going on for you? I saw a second video on your channel. Yes, I do have two videos now. Um, not sure if I'm going to continue making more. See what happens and what things come my way. Um, living a normal Melody life otherwise. Nothing exciting going on? <laughs> Never. Well she, well, she works for a game company. That's pretty cool. My life is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it's only really? as boring as you want it to be. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so we're going to head off into your channel now because I want to see what's been going on over there. <laughs> I like digging down deep into your channel. <laughs> Do not feel sorry for Melody in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Don't. Like oh, I work, I work as a, as a project manager at a game company. Senior producer. Oh, I'm wow. sorry. Senior producer. Well, well. What kind of games do you make? Um, real time strategy games for the most part on mobile and the web. And yeah. Have a couple of new games coming out. So but. you guys just came out with uh, Oregon Trail, huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, Oregon Trail. It's... That's... No, I'm just kidding. Hey, I missed that game. Oh, she she was part of the Farmville group. Really? Yeah, if you remember that. Wait, so are you addicting... saying that's not that big of a deal? Farm Farmville was huge. Oh yeah, Far even Farmville, even my Farmville, grandmother Farmville. was playing in that at one point. Oh, I think a lot of grandmothers were playing that. <laughs> that game. It sucked in middle-aged women faster than anything. I, I've never seen middle-aged women spend that much money <laughs> where they just crank it out. You know, because Farmville was the um, the new model that's been out for a few years, the uh, the pay-to-win model, which you can you know, you can buy your your success in a game. is a fickle word, an even more ironic moment in time. No one really understands how it began or where it will end. To some, life is to be spent living to its fullest, while some others prefer the solitude of a mountaintop in seclusion. The one thing we are aware of is that life is a very fragile moment in the slipstream of time that can only be described as eternity. Your life should be spent doing what it is that you feel you should do with yours as it is a short remembrance in the grand scheme of those who are close to you. How you live now will be how people remember who you were. So live well. Segment two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Sorry, I had to. Okay, uh, segment two. I actually play that crowd noise in in the bedroom, just so you know. Nice. Uh, you got, got it set up. Okay. Again, no comment. Okay. <laughs> we gotta try that. All right. <laughs> Are we done? Okay, <laughs> so this is episode 52, segment 2, and now we get down and dirty. <laughs> oh, wow. That sounded somewhat anal. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yeah. So what is it? What's the question of the day? Yeah, it's... uh, <laughs> Which... Would you do whatever it takes to survive and live a longer life? Mark, would you do whatever it takes? No, and I wrote a survival manual. So, no, I wouldn't, as a matter of fact. Uh, especially since the whole Flat Earth thing came out, because I won't do anything malicious to anybody. Now, I will defend myself uh, to, to the nth degree. So if there's people that want my stuff, they ain't getting it. Oh, they can take a couple barrels and call me in the morning. Uh, but I will not go out of my way to do, you know, I won't take from somebody else 
just to keep me alive a little longer. I think that's bad karma. So, you know, I mean, just be nice. That's what. I, so no, I wouldn't. I would not. Uh, I would not. You know, I wouldn't. Even though I wrote a chapter on looting, it, that chapter really wasn't for me. And I, I, I think I put that in the manual. I said, look, I don't encourage it in any way, shape, or form. So no, I would not do anything that it takes to stay alive. And also, I'm not a big. I don't. I don't fear the afterlife. I know what's outside of this place, and it's you know it's not a bad thing. I'm looking forward to it. So hanging out here, scraping, you know, hanging on my fingernails to for a few extra hours or days, nah, nah not a chance. And Melody, I agree. No, uh, I wouldn't do whatever it takes. I think I would push my limits a little bit more in a survival situation. Um, but I don't think I could bring myself to hurt anyone or... Oh, no. No, I couldn't do it. And yeah, I'm not as afraid of death as a lot of people either, I think. So, no. <laughs> and Christina? So, um... Yeah, I don't think I would go to the point where I would go out of my way to hurt somebody or anything like that either. But I think, you know... At a certain point, your instincts of survival kind of kick in, depending on what the situation is around you. So, I guess that everybody has their own limitations on what exactly they would do. Also, I was thinking about it in terms of just being healthy, like mm -hmm. just trying to, you know, longevity of your life. Because we have a Mr. Emke over here on our side of the fence that isn't doing the greatest. And so... I was thinking in terms of health wise and you know what what exactly would you do to improve your life and make it last a little bit longer and we've actually tried some a few things that I wouldn't necessarily have done in the past <laughs> health wise and uh, it's actually working out pretty good so what have you done do you really want to know <laughs> I know Mark is. No. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I. Okay. <laughs> why? Okay, why do you guys do this? Okay, so no, I would not do anything it takes. I've had cancer twice. I've faced death many times. I'm like the unbreakable man. Um. So yeah, I mean, I'm just perfect. I mean, I. <laughs> oh please. I don't. I don't think I'll ever have an issue. Um. Yeah. I. No, I. In all seriousness, I wouldn't do whatever it takes to live a longer life. I, uh, I wouldn't take someone else's life to make mine live longer. I am curious to know what what people think. I mean, it is a good question, right? They say you can't commit murder, but is it really murder if you're self defending yourself? If self defending yourself, if you're defending yourself, I guess that would be the next question. Yeah, I'm sure there are some people out there. Would you do more to save someone else versus saving yourself? Ah, uh, ah, uh, there's the question. What would you do to save to save Christina? And more importantly, what would you do to save me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the the end of uh, that? Uh, what is it? The Red Dragon. You ever seen that that movie? Red. You Dragon? mean the the sequel to uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would yes. strap the person to a boat, light them on fire until they told me what I needed to know. Nice. I got your back. Thanks, man. <laughs> really, really great. No, I no, I would definitely go out of my way to uh, to help people, and some people anyway, and uh, even more so. I hate to say this because you know I'm going to catch some flag for it. Um, uh, animals, uh, innocents, uh, innocent people or innocent creatures. I would go out of my way to do uh, extreme things on their behalf because uh, especially domesticated animals because we bred them for that purpose to be our companions to be our friends uh, to and and to if something I, I think we have an obligation there okay so, so would you actually okay so you're standing outside a burning building and you see a cat or a dog yeah. would you actually go try to get it yeah I would you pray if, if, if it was possible, sure. Uh, how many times do we see firefighters adopt cats because uh, mother mother cats will go into a burning building and and 
pull out their kittens one by one until all the kittens are, are out or they are dead. Uh, oh. One of the two. And it's happened many, many times. And Well, uh, yeah, you'll see some dogs. I was watching this one video on this, this. This guy was going down a river. He was in a boat. The boat tipped over. The dog swam out. He had, a, he had two dogs in the boat with him. And one dog started drowning. So the other dog that made it to safety actually jumped back in the water and pulled the other dog to safety and then jumped back in the water and grabbed the man that was drowning. Wow. I was amazed hmm. when I saw that. And I was like, wow. So yeah, yeah. I I've seen the I've seen the kitten. I've seen the cats. Cats do it. Dogs do it too. They'll keep going yeah. in and out of the building without even thinking about it. It's true. Yeah, and there's it's kind of sad. There are many instances, like you said, Mark, where we domesticate the animals, and then something will happen, and something like some house catches on fire, and then people run out and they leave the domesticated animal behind, and yeah, it's just really sad. But now here's the hard question. Would you actually go back in for, say, a goldfish? No, because the goldfish isn't really a domesticated uh, animal, in my opinion. I mean, you got to draw the line somewhere, right? Uh, you know, fish aren't necessarily known for cuddling. What about a hamster? Hamsters are. Mm, <laughs> no. So what's no, the line? Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't do it for a hamster. So it's primarily big and domesticated animals, the tiny ones. Yeah, yeah, cat, cats. I mean, everything that's on the Humane Society logo. So cats, dogs, horses. Birds. Um, the occasional ostrich, sure. What about you, a Melody? Lemur, a lemur, an armadillo. Uh, armadillo? Per, per, perhaps a panda. I don't know. Pandas are nice. They're yeah. not mean creatures. At least I haven't seen any videos where they're, like, mauling somebody to death. No. Which brings me to the next thing. Would you ever do something that Grizzly Man did? I don't know if you ever saw Grizzly Man the movie, but I watched it. Yeah, he was an idiot. That that <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, I, he was looking to die. I'm sorry. That that guy. You. you yeah, that's a. Uh, you know, plant yourself in in Alaska in front of a bear trail that it, and during the hungry season. You know, just when the bears are still hungry and and you're you're alone out there. What do you think's gonna happen? That was that was that was awful. Why'd you bring up that documentary? <laughs> <laughs> Good talking, job. You're talking about s saving animals, right? <laughs> so I just wanted to know how far would you go? What about you, Melody? I said uh, Melody. I exaggerated Melody too. So it would I did push it out. There. Um. Hmm. That's a tough one. I uh, actually had animals in a house fire once, and I was very concerned about my turtles, but. Really? Uh, Surprisingly, they survived the fire, which was pretty awesome to hear afterwards. Um, but no, I can't even, I can't even kill an insect. And but as far as saving an animal in danger, hmm, I don't know. I'm pretty similar to Mark that way. I think. I mean, so would you? Would I sacrifice my own health and safety for an animal? Right? What are the chances I'm going to get? Uh, injured in the process so you'd have to balance that yeah i mean if it was like if the stairwell was going to collapse and the dog was on the other side or the cat was on the other side i might i might take a chance for it but if that stairwell you know you have to work out the odds if it, if it looks like it's going to go down it's like uh, I, I don't know you know if neither of us are going to get out then what's the what why would i go in yeah well, I bring that question up because I know I know it's not unrelated, but I was watching a bunch of 9-11 documentaries, and they talk about the, the firefighters and the paramedics all going up and, and how, you know, when the building collapsed, they were all, like, in the stairwells and everything. But, you know, the number one thing that you're trained as a paramedic is you have to take care of your safety before anything else because you're no good. Mm-hmm. If something else is injured, which which is why I was kind of bringing it up. The Grizzly Man thing? Oh, no, that was just because I saw a GoPro ad uh, for a GoPro camera, right? <laughs> and the, it was all about this guy, right, doing uh, a thing with a grizzly bear and how he raising it in the wild. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I just got through watching the Grizzly Man, <laughs> right? And they're shooting yeah. this ad out. I'm like, what are they, nuts? So, I... yeah, the Grizzly Man was a, was a tough thing to watch, and thank God they never released the uh, 
you know the audio tape no. from the uh, from the actual attack. That was not fun. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Did I, did I ever... the to attack him? What had happened was he was a big. He was really known for taking video footage of really close up uh, grizzly bears up up in the Alaskan territory, and he stayed way longer than he should have one year. He kept going back and he kept doing, you know, and you know, they were, they were fine around him and he kept going back. And then one year he stayed way too late. Honestly, it was like he had a death wish Right. Okay. and he planted his, he tent, he camped out, he and his girlfriend on a known bear trail with uh, where there were hostile bears in the area. And you know, the bears came in and dragged him off and ate him. And they, they they came in and grabbed the the girlfriend and, and dragged her off and ate her, and he had he had the freaking audio recording the entire time, and his one of his ex girlfriends or something you know they they gave it to her and she was actually thinking of you know really releasing it to the documentary team and and they said yeah you don't want to play this ever because you know, it was off so and they, they but anyway by the time the park rangers got up there and killed the bear and figured out what went on. Uh, uh, you know, it was too late, uh, but it was it was awful. It was a terrible story. It was, it was gruesome, but he but he was asking for it. I mean, he stayed way longer than normal. Yeah, but it almost and... seemed like he was going crazy. Like halfway yeah, through, yeah, he, he was, starts yeah, acting he was, really weird. Yeah, hmm. he was freaking losing it. I mean, it was it was it, yeah. If you get a chance, yeah, watch the um, <laughs> end of the documentary. He was he was getting out there. After but this a while. new GoPro ad that they they put out like a couple of weeks ago. Is literally mimicking this guy. Hmm. It's not. They're not making fun of the grizzly man or anything. It's just there's another guy doing the same thing. So I went in their comments in YouTube and I said, maybe you guys should watch this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sickly curious to see this now. You, you, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, it is intriguing. I mean, it's like watching I, a slow motion car wreck. And mm -hmm. the guy did get great footage. I will say that. I mean, he was right up there. You know, was talking to the grizzly bears, and he was within point blank range. They could have taken him out at any time, and uh, it was only at the end when he was hanging out with bears that he didn't know. It wasn't like any of his friends took him down. Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events.